And welcome to the Hardin Simmons Coaches Show with Head Coach Jesse Burleson. I'm Al Pickett. The Cowboys celebrating homecoming this week as they take on Texas Lutheran. We'll talk about that in a moment. But first, we look back at last week's 19-16 to overtime win over McMurray in the Crosstown Showdown. Coach, crazy game. Uh, you have over eight minutes more uh, time of possession. You have over 100 yards more offense, yet it ends up going overtime. Yeah, it was uh, it was one of those ones that uh, as long as you do this, you think you've kind of seen how every game is going to go, and I uh, didn't, definitely didn't see that one uh, working out that way, especially when you look at the stats. We, we you know, we moved the ball, uh, we did the things we needed to do, but we bogged down in, in crucial situations. Uh, obviously, can't miss uh, field goals whenever that opportunity presents itself, and then uh, short yardage situations we didn't do very well. So we're going to make sure we get that fixed. Yeah, you got you got to the one once and, and got a penalty and didn't score two blocked field goals, a missed extra point. It was just like it was just a. You know, like bad things were going to happen at some point. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, I think there's a couple of factors. And then I think the mo most important was probably lack of focus. And uh, that's something that we can definitely improve on. It's not like we don't have the guys that can do it. It was just uh, simply losing focus for that split second. And, and it cost us points in that game. I want to take you through the overtime. Uh, you end up t regulation tied 13-13. You have the coin flip, and I assume you wanted and elected to play defense first. That is correct. You is always want to do that in overtime. Yeah, yes. you always want to do that. They kick a field goal, go up 16-13. You're stymied to have to kick a field goal. You kick it. They get a, 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 a leaping penalty, if you will. Explain that penalty. Uh, to, to gave you a first down. It's a player safety rule, and I think uh, some people didn't understand what it was, but you can't jump over a player on a kicking play and come down. Um, I mean, it's just – it's really for the safety of both players. It's not just for the, the kicking team, and so it's been a rule for, for several years, so it hadn't changed anything. You know, you haven't been able to do that. It's a personal foul if you do, so that's what they called and uh, was able to give us a first down. Is that using leverage on, on the center or whatever, or is it just jumping over him? You, you can't jump over him, and you can't be on the center anymore, which is a great rule as well, because that center's unprotected. He's got his head down, you know, obviously looking for the snap and those things. And so they they put that one into play two years ago, but the leaping rule's been probably four or five years now. And so, because uh, you would have things where people would try to jump and, and block it, and they come down on top of a player and hurt themselves or hurt the guy that they come down on. It's, it's, it's a good rule. It's a sound rule. So you elected to take the points off the board that would have sent it to a second overtime and get first down at the 10-yard line. Take about through that decision. Uh, I think it's a no-brainer at that point. Uh, whenever the, the opponent has scored uh, the, the field goal, you know, if you've got a chance to win the thing, you've got to go got to go take a, take advantage of that instead of – because, I mean, other, the other option is you say it and you're going to have to go score again anyway. So um, we're just going to make sure that, uh, that we put ourselves in positions to be successful. And as soon as that happened, it was a no-brainer. Nobody even questioned it. We just said we're going. And three running plays and you get the touchdown – McMurray really loaded the box on you. You had a little trouble getting anything sustained running game wise. Yep, they they have a good defense. You know, I told told everybody that they they've done a good job with what they do, and uh, they they cause some issues with the blitzing and the different things that they do. I thought our guys handled it fine. We moved the ball at will. I, I felt like for most of the most of the game, we just in those crucial situations, man, we've got to understand how important they are and got to make sure we convert whenever that uh, whenever those come up. Crosstown games. Anything can happen, right? Yeah, throw the records out the window, everybody. You know, I think, uh, uh, you know, be honest, uh, I think some of our people are spoiled and think uh, they, they know how the outcome of the game should be, and, and that's okay. You know, we, we, we like the, the fact that they expect us to win and uh, win big. I had a couple people say, man, that was too close for me, but they don't understand what it takes to get that thing done. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's hard. We've had a ton of injuries. And you can sit there and whine and complain and say, man, we've got this guy hurt and this guy hurt, but that has nothing to do with it. It's it's a little adversity, and, and we've been able to overcome that. Next man up, and here we go. I want to talk about the injuries. You've been missing your center and quarterback on offense and four or five starters on defense. Anybody back this week? We, we should be getting some guys back finally. I haven't been able to say that, uh, but, uh, but Galen had a good day yesterday, and so it was nice to see him uh, back out there taking the snap and being ready to go. Uh, Caden Mickner was able to do – uh, do some things, and uh, uh, Matt Mitchell's is one step closer. And so that's uh, that, that's definitely a good thing to have those guys back in the mix. And uh, obviously good players, but they're just good to have out there to uh, to be the guys that can be the leaders and, and kind of be the glue for the rest of the team. Now homecoming, Texas Lutheran, they're 1-4. They've played good people. They got 
pounded pretty good by Mary Harden Baylor last week. Opened the season with a loss to Wisconsin Oshkosh. Their other loss, uh, a field goal in the last play of the game against Sol Ross State. Uh, they beat Southwestern. Uh, tell us what you know about Texas Lutheran. Uh, very talented team. I think they they have uh, they've got talent at every position. I mean, when you look across the board, it's not like they're they're missing guys. They've just uh, they've had some some bad breaks. So I'm sure they're they're wanting to get back on track. I think the one thing that you'll definitely see with them whenever you see them play is you're like, man, these guys have been playing forever. You're going to hear names that literally I'm like, there's no way that guy could still be playing, but they're probably saying that about some of our guys too. Uh, their running backs have both been playing for a long time. The two inside linebackers have been playing for a really long time. So they, they have some experience and they have a lot of talent. So uh, they've been in the scheme for a few years now with the, with their new head coach, and, and they're, they're well coached and they play hard, and, uh, and we're going to have our hands full with them. What are keys for your team? Uh, the focus is the thing, is understanding how, how important each and every play is to the outcome of the game. You know, you know, if everybody would would know, hey, this play right here is going to be the determining factor, you would have a, you know intense desire to focus on that play and uh, and play it exactly like it needs to be played. And so that's going to be the focus for us. And, and our guys have understood that and had a phenomenal day yesterday, maybe one of our best days of uh, a practice of the year. And uh, I think we'll improve on that today and, and gear up and get ready for Saturday. Four and one, you're two and zero oh in conference. There's, there's no margin error. You just got to keep it rolling, right? That's it. The train is on the track. You got to, you got to keep it on that track. And uh, you never know how those things are going to look. But our, our guys are going to do their very best to find a way to win. And the bottom line in homecoming, your part is to win a homecoming. We game. have <laughs> one job at homecoming, and I, that is what I told our guys on Sunday. I said, Hey, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. We have one job, and that's to just to play to our standard, and win the game. We're looking forward to it. Coach, good luck. Thanks, Al. Appreciate it. Jesse Burleson, that's the Hardin-Simmons Coaches Show, and we'll continue with more after we take this break.